The erythrometer, invented by the Frenchman Thomas de Comar, was the world's first mass-produced and marketed mechanical calculator. Thomas's original patent was filed in 1821, but he spent the next 30 years perfecting its design. About 5,500 machines of various models were built during the period 1851 through 1915. The machine described in this video is the so-called 1865 model. The arithmometer is simple to use. The upper part of the calculator contains the accumulator dials that display results. Values are entered using sliders set to each digit. Turning the crank adds or subtracts the input value with the accumulator, depending on the setting of the operation control lever. Here we are adding 2,537 plus 142. Let's take a closer look at what happens when we add a number to the accumulator. Inside the air thermometer is a set of stepped cylinders that rotate when you turn the crank. Each stepped cylinder is covered with nine cogs of increasing length. The cogs mesh with a tin-toothed conductor gear that slides along a square shaft. The position of the conductor gear is set by an input slider. An accumulator dial is linked to the square shaft by a bevel gear. Each time a cog meshes with the conductor gear, it rotates the accumulator dial by 36 degrees, an amount corresponding to one digit. The cog cylinder is often called a Leibniz wheel in honor of the mathematician Gottfried Leibniz, who invented it in the late 1600s. Notice that the bevel gear is actually a pair of opposing gears. The operation control lever drives a mechanism for shifting the position of the bevel gears so that either gear can mesh with the accumulator dial, thereby reversing its direction of rotation and allowing either addition or subtraction to be performed. The conductor gears on the early models of the arithmometer tended to over-rotate when the crank was turned too quickly, thereby generating an incorrect result. Thomas incorporated an interlock mechanism consisting of a Maltese cross-shaped wheel attached to the conductor shaft and a specially shaped moderating cylinder mounted on the shaft of the Leibniz wheel. The moderating cylinder mates with the Maltese cross in such a way that the cross can only turn while the conductor gear is meshed with the Leibniz wheel. To perform addition correctly requires a carry mechanism, which uses all of the parts shown here. At the heart of the mechanism is the carry finger, which is attached to the front of the moderating cylinder on the Leibniz wheel shaft. In its resting position, the carry finger does not interact with other parts. During a carry, the finger moves forward and lines up with a carry gear attached to the conductor shaft. As the Leibniz wheel rotates, the carry finger meshes with the carry gear, rotating the gear by 36 degrees, which advances the accumulator dial by one digit. The extra rotation of the Maltese cross wheel during a carry requires modifying the shape of the moderating cylinder to allow the Maltese cross to pass. So, how does a carry tooth move forward during a carry? On the underside of each accumulator dial is a diamond-shaped stud. When the accumulator dial passes from 0 to 9, or 9 to 0 in the case of subtraction, the stud presses against a horizontal lever, which in turn presses against a vertical lever, which pulls forward a retaining fork attached to the carry finger. Everything happens very quickly. So we'll slow down the action to make it more understandable. After the carry has been performed, the carry finger is forced back into its original position by a steel pin which pushes against a spiral ramp on the face of the carry finger. 
This action also resets the other parts of the mechanism and prepares them for the next carry. A set of leaf springs attached to the retaining fork ensures the carry finger will be either fully engaged or disengaged with the carry gear. The triangular cross section of the holes the springs pass through encourage the springs to remain on one side or the other of the air thermometer's front plate. The resting angle of each Leibniz wheel is offset by 18 degrees from its lower order neighbor to ensure any lower order carry operation has completed before the higher order carry operation begins. Here you see how this allows a carry to ripple up the columns when we add 1 to the value 9999. This particular model of arithmometer has six input columns and a 12-digit accumulator. The calculating unit is supplemented by two partial columns that only perform carry operations, allowing a wider operating range while reducing the cost of the calculator. The accumulator is contained in a movable carriage that can be tilted up to disengage the dials and shifted, allowing rapid multiplication and division to be accomplished through a combination of repeated additions or subtractions and carriage shifts. For example, we can multiply 4,619 by 11 with only two crank rotations. First, we set the input knobs to 4,619. Then we turn the crank once. Shift the carriage one column to the right so the accumulator tens digit is aligned with the lowest order input column and turn the crank one more time. The carriage contains a seven digit counter that records the number of turns performed during rapid multiplication and division. Because it is never necessary to turn the crank more than nine times for any column, no carry mechanisms are needed in the counter, greatly simplifying its design. Each counter dial has two sets of numbers. One set advances when the dial turns in the clockwise direction, and the other set advances when the dial turns in the counterclockwise direction. The counter dials are turned by a gear assembly located near the lowest order column. The gear assembly is driven by a finger mounted on a shaft on the lowest order Leibniz wheel. This finger is moved forward and backward by the operation control lever, such that the finger meshes with the front gear during multiplication and the rear gear during division. The net effect of the gear assembly is that the counter dial is turned clockwise during multiplication and counterclockwise during division. The accumulator can be reset to zero by first lifting the carriage to disengage the result dials from the bevel gears and then turning a knob on the left side of the carriage. Each accumulator dial includes a 10 tooth zeroing gear where the tooth corresponding to the zero numeral has been removed. The knob turns a gear that pulls a toothed rack along a slanted plane until the rack meshes with the zeroing gears, causing each accumulator dial to rotate until its missing tooth is encountered. The rack is returned to its resting position by a watch spring that was wound tight as the rack was pulled across the dials. A similar mechanism is used to reset the counter dials. The arithmometer includes several mechanisms to ensure the accuracy of calculations and prevent damage to the calculator. The Maltese cross moderating mechanism and the carry leaf springs were described earlier. A pawl and ratchet on the crankshaft prevents the user from turning the crank in the wrong direction. An interlock disc prevents the operation control lever from being moved while the crank is turning. A rod protruding from the control lever can only pass through a slot in the disc when the crank is in its resting position. Lastly, 
Leaf springs are used to hold the accumulator dials in place while the carriage is being shifted, and the counter dials when they are not engaged with the turns counter gear assembly. The arithmometer had a huge influence on the design of later calculating machines, which incorporate many of the mechanisms described here. This is a testimony to the genius of Thomas de Comar.